everybody. My name is Lisa Harvey, and I'm coming to you from the Friday Institute of Educational Innovation at North Carolina State University. And it's proud to be a partner in the Epic Ed project, which really helps educators at all levels really go through the digital conversion, or that is using, you know, and becoming a technology infused school or district. So welcome, I'm so excited about our very first Teacher Feature Friday. And these will be um, posted every two weeks. And what I'd hope to do is to sort of engage everyone in a dialogue around what I think are really trending topics and what it means to be an educator in this ever-changing land landscape. So the first theme that I really wanna tackle over these first couple of months is you know, trying to understand this idea of what it really means to be a highly connected educator. You know, what we know as educators is that we are constantly being called upon to keep abreast of the latest practices, the technologies, and the tools that encourage and instill creative creativity and innovations in, in our students. And that now becomes a vital part of the mo modern artistry that is K-12 education and beyond. But what we know is that this can be aided by joining or becoming an active member of what we call personal learning communities or networks. Those are often referred to as PLNs or PLCs. So when, when, when educators take the opportunity for personal learning through a, a community, we know that that learning is often guided by high expectations, you know, shared goals, uh, a sense of professionalism and accountability so that we all can go back to our practice and make transformative changes. And that can be wherever it is that you intersect in this, this thing we call learning and teaching. We also know that we are then able to take advantage of this distributive expertise when we, we pool our intellectual resources so that we can together achieve a goal or solve a problem of practice. But it reminds me of a phrase I often used with my 6th uh, through 8th graders of over 10 years where I would say, you know, you know, hard work is made light by the hands of many. And I believe that, particularly in the age of the digital conversion, this has never been more true. So, you know, what we hope that connected um, learners are able to do is that they're able to develop these really strong networks, that they're able to co-construct knowledge wherever they live, and then they use online resources, social media to, to in, interact and engage with colleagues across the globe so that they can bring what they learn back to their practice. And so that, and what we also know is that within these connected networks or that, that teaching becomes more apparent and, and teachers build capacity and, and deepen their understanding of the latest technology or the latest best practice. And it helps you stay current and focusing on student-centered learning. So one of the most powerful ways to engage daily in thought-provoking discussions and to connect with other colleagues is through Twitter. One of the, the, one of the um, ways that I personally um, use Twitter is I follow something called um, EdChat. For those of you that may not be familiar with Twitter, um, you can actually follow a stream where multiple people can come in and that's usually with a number sign or pound followed by the name of the stream. And so it's pound at chat, as you see on your screen now. And these are this is a really unique stream in that they actually organize a discussion every Tuesday at 7 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time. And even more uniquely, Steve Anderson and his colleagues actually tweet out a poll every Sunday with four topics to choose among that will be the focus of the discussion on the following Tuesday. So the topic that gets the most votes is the one that's the focus of the discussion. Then these are then archived and then they can be reviewed. So if you can't join them at seven o'clock, you can review the, the stream at a different time. Um, the interesting thing about this Twitter chat is it's really an opportunity to engage and think and share and then go and do. And so they, 
they, they actually follow up the conversation through the rest of the week and people come back and reflect or talk about the, the, how they may have applied the new knowledge that they, that they gleaned during the chat. So that's one way. Another way is to, to, to join a Ning or a group of educators that have similar interests. So for example, Epic Ed is one that obviously you could join and be a part of, but some other ones that are a little more focused uh, uh, for like teachers that are in the classroom is Classroom 2.0. Um, that's run by Steve Harganon, and he also has another um, Ning that he's running, which is Teacher 2.0. So those are two great communities that you can join. Another way that I engage with others to help build my capacity as a highly connected educator is I, I choose a couple of blogs that I like to follow. And so um, recently, Cheryl Nussbaum Beach released um, a list of 25 top blogs that all educators should read, and three of the ones that I actually follow were on there. And so I'd like to share those with you now. You know, the first one that I've been following for a really long time is um, Vicki Davis. Uh, she's known as Cool Cat, Cool Cat Teacher Davis. And she really uses cutting edge technology technologies with both middle and high school students and then she shares her adventures both the good and the bad and and her advice on a daily basis at her at her blog cool cat teacher blog Another a blog that I really find very useful is Nicholas Provenzenzo's reviews and, and, and where he shares his thoughts about amazing websites and books and apps. And I love the name of this one. It's the Nerdy Teacher Blog. So check that one out. Another one that I really find useful is Lynn Hilt, and she does write from a principal's perspective, but I really believe that anyone involved in education could benefit from her, her blog entitled The Principal's Post. So what we need to think about, I want to leave you with the thought that what technology has done is it's really helped emerge a new culture where as educators we need to shift away from working in our silos, you know, and closing that classroom door, wherever it is that you work, and, and become willing to become deeply committed and part of a learning community so that we can again attack and achieve goals and solve problems of practice and we all are lifted up um, through the help of each other. Next week, or actually two weeks from now, I will be going over, well, how do you kind of manage all of this? You know, I don't want to be opening up all these different blogs. I know how do you kind of aggregate all of this great wealth of information into a kind of an easy way to look at these things during your day because we all are very busy in our daily lives. So next, the next time, the next Teacher Feature Friday, we'll really focus on what we call RSS feeds. And I will be introducing you to um, at least two ways for you to kind of connect with all of these sort of professional learning communities out there on the web. We'll be looking at iGoogle and we'll also be looking at an extension that you can put on your Google Chrome that also aggregates um, all sorts of different feeds. So tune in next time where I will actually really show you how to actually get some RSS feeds and be start your journey to becoming a highly connected educator. See you next time.